Breaking the law, breaking the law. Breaking the law, breaking the law. Christians! Hey guys, it is Christy. It is Sunday. I'm in my PJs. I got a cup of tea and I have slides filled with examples of, I think it's mostly Christians in the US, doing things that are in violation of the law because they think as Christians they have more rights than everybody else and have the ability to impose their religion without it actually being an imposition. Let's find out what happened in the last couple weeks. Mom says court forced her into religious parenting sessions. A woman in New Mexico says she was forced into mandatory religious sessions last year after a court sent her to a counselor to help her take care of her twin 11-year-old boys. Quote, I walked into the session and the very first thing she, the counselor, said to me was, I start my sessions with praying, Holly Saltzman told a local media station. She went on to say, when I expressed my concern that I didn't pray, she said, well, this is what I do, and she proceeded to say a prayer out loud. A court late last year assigned Saltzman to 10 sessions with a counselor, Mary Pepper, who prides herself on valuing family, but Saltzman said that when she arrived, Pepper promoted explicitly religious values. After that first session, Saltzman complained to the court about Pepper. When the court didn't respond, Saltzman stopped attending the sessions. Consequently, the court took away her children and returned them only once she had completed the assigned meetings. Pepper's sessions involved handouts with psalms printed on them and an assignment requiring Saltzman to answer the question, what is God to me? David Neos, legal director for the American Humanist Association said, this is a situation, quote, in which a parent seeking custody is sent to Christian counseling as a condition of getting custody, unquote. Doesn't, then that doesn't appear legal. Some of you may have seen the story covered on the Young Turks. I saw it was just, they covered it in the last couple days and apparently the woman did some recording of her sessions. She did it in order to get her kids back, but she did like sort of an expose recording of what happened during her sessions. And you know, if you want to know whether or not this is tolerable, all you'd have to do is flip it on its head and have a Christian be assigned to an atheist counselor who was, um, you know, had them write out, uh, gave them handouts with the God delusion quotes printed on them and had reading, um, answering the question, why doesn't God exist? It's entirely bullshit and I'm, I'm really happy that the American Humanist Association has taken this woman's case on and I hope both the counselor and the state are straightened out. You'll be forgiven for thinking that this is the same story twice, but it's not. Humanist group defends atheist sentenced to attend faith-based substance abuse program. Obviously, the, the substance abuse was the difference, but if I had just put faith-based program, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between this story and the last one. And it's basically similar situation. The American Humanist Association's Apagani, maybe? Humanist Legal Center sent a letter to state officials in the King County's District Court and Municipal Court of Seattle on behalf of an atheist who is unconstitutionally being forced to attend a faith-based substance abuse program. The letter stated that after a DUI hearing in February, Michael Baker was sentenced to attend Alcoholics Anonymous meetings as a condition of his parole. Baker repeatedly asked for information on secular substance abuse programs and as an atheist, the faith-based aspects of AA made him extremely uncomfortable. At several AA meetings, Baker was verbally harassed for his atheism by attendees. Quote, the state cannot require an atheist to undergo faith-based treatment, as doing so clearly violates the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment. In fact, the Ninth Circuit has twice held that a parolee's right to be free from coerced participation in AA is a matter of quote, uncommonly well-settled case law, unquote, said Monica Miller, senior counsel with the Humanist Legal Center. This week's respect and props and praise and gratitude goes to the American Humanist Association out there doing work that is improving people's lives. Thank you guys so much. Pennsylvania school returning donated Ten Commandments monument targeted by atheist group. Hey! A Pittsburgh school district is returning a Ten Commandments monument to the fraternal organization that donated it in the 1950s because a federal judge ruled last month that it violates the First Amendment. 
senior U.S. District Judge Terrence McFerry ruled that the monument outside Conisville Area Junior High School violated the part of the amendment that has been interpreted by courts as barring government from endorsing a particular religion. The school board voted Wednesday to return the monument to the Fraternal Order of Eagles. When and how that will be done hasn't been decided. Since the 1950s, and you know that was at the time when there was a big red scare and anti-communism and atheism was linked to communism and Christianity was seen as seen as being part of America and building up this whole bullshit myth of America as somehow God's chosen land and chosen people because they want to take that mantle on from Israel. Um, and for the longest time, of course, you know people weren't, uh, even though it was a clear violation of the law, nobody was standing up for the law and now somebody has and the law is being followed and then nobody's being hurt because their ten commandments isn't on school property they still have their beliefs they still have their rights they can still go into their closet and pray in secret um as their father as jesus taught them to do and that none of that is being harmed the only thing that's being harmed in this case is their ego and their christian privilege and neither of those are worth like defending Atheists forced Mississippi school to censure a teacher who put up classroom prayer board. And well, they should, because prayer boards don't belong in public school classrooms. When a teacher at a public school in Mississippi put up a box for student prayer requests in the classroom and offered to pray for her students, she and her school were immediately threatened with a lawsuit by an atheist organization, Charisma News reported. The Apignani, and I'm just guessing at that pronunciation in this story and the last one, Humanist Legal Center, a division of the American Humanist Association, recently sent a letter to the Mississippi School District threatening to file the lawsuit if the teacher did not remove her prayer request board in her classroom at Oak Grove Middle School in Lamar County School District, Mississippi. The teacher's action in displaying the prayer requests board, which she seems to acknowledge is illegal, and her insistence on continuing to take prayer requests and keep the board up, even if she must remove the word prayer, violates the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment, unquote. The letter itself read. The Lamar County School District complied with the letter and even sent memos to all principals, teachers, and staff directing them not to promote prayer or religion in schools. That wasn't so hard, was it? Really wasn't. Atheists threaten lawsuit over Christian principals' graduation prayers finding Jesus' sign on district property. It's just the same bullshit, thinking that they can dominate in terms of their religious beliefs because they're the majority and they don't have to treat other people with respect, and so they don't. An atheist organization is threatening to sue a Georgia school district amid accusations that a primary school principal violated the U.S. Constitution by leading Christian prayers during graduation ceremonies. This is also a story that's a direct result of the Apignani, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, Humanist Legal Center, the legal arm of the American Humanist Association. They have just been dominating this segment this week. The graduation prayers and the Jesus sign are clear violations of the establishment cause of this First Amendment. If corrective steps are not taken immediately, our organization will pursue the matter through litigation in federal court. Miller requested that the officials respond with written assurances that changes have been made within seven days of the complaint being sent. Constant vigilance. And these groups are doing a fantastic job of maintaining constant vigilance. Satanic Temple mocks laughable attempt to kill religious freedom suit aimed at Missouri abortion laws. Tying into the story uh, that was in my last segment about the role of religious beliefs and malpractice, this also is a point where religion um, and control over women's bodies is, is basically that nexus of religious patriarchy in the secular law. Top Missouri officials are asking that a lawsuit brought by the Satanic Temple challenging the state's mandated 72-hour waiting period for an abortion to be thrown out, but the Satanists say that that's proof they have a strong case. The motion to dismiss was filed Tuesday by Governor Jay Nixon and State Attorney General Chris Koster, claiming the suit doesn't show sufficient proof the plaintiffs were harmed, the Kansas City Star reports. They also claim they are legally protected from being named in such suits because they are elected officials. 
The state currently mandates abortion providers give pregnant patients anti-abortion propaganda material on the physical characteristics of the fetus and their ability to feel pain at 22 weeks of gestation. Women must then wait 72 hours after being given the option to see an ultrasound and hear a fetal heartbeat before receiving an abortion. This is a clear violation of the Establishment Clause, which prevents the government from favoring one religion over another, or lack thereof, according to the Satanic Temple's lawsuit. Women whose decision to terminate a pregnancy is informed by her deeply held belief in Satanic principles of bodily autonomy and scientific deference should not be made to endure state-sanctioned proselytization of a conflicting religious perspective, Graves wrote. Hey guys, that's going to be it for this episode of the American Humanist Association <laughs> Legal Department's um, episode of Facepalm Moments, Breaking the Law. And wow, holy cow, those guys are doing a fantastic job. I hope you found all of this informative. And, you know, w these are the kinds of stories when someone at your Thanksgiving dinner whines to you that Christians are being persecuted in America. You can just start listing off all of these stories of Christians who are trying to dominate um, other people of rights of conscience by promoting their own religion above and ab uh, above and beyond everybody else's views in the United States and how they routinely break the law. And people who are breaking the law cannot be persecuted by that law if they're actually, you know, trying to manipulate it in order to get rights that other people don't have. That's not persecution, that's actually discrimination um, that they're perpetrating on everybody else. And taking away their ability to discriminate, that's not persecution. That's, that's called equality. Right, so I will see you guys hopefully on Tuesday for next week's episode of Face Palm Moments of the Week. As always, I've been Christy, and you've been awesome. Thanks for watching to the end of the video. And just to let you know, this coming up weekend on the 27th, the Sunday, let me just check the date on that. Yes, confirming the 27th on Sunday is going to be my first Patreon hangout. And we're going to be discussing historical methods and the historical Jesus. In particular, we're going to be looking at uh, some videos that were done uh, by Yale um, that are available on YouTube. Bart Ehrman, there's also some other methods uh, links. And we're going to be discussing how we can know what we know about T things, biblical text and things that happened in that time period and creating a common basis for understanding our historical methods when we look at text and what can be considered and how it can be considered and what we can conclude from it, what we can conclude from it before moving forward into discussing um, the idea of an historical Jesus. So if you would like to join, you just have to be a member of my Patreon patrons and that comes um, for a dollar a month or more if you're feeling more generous but the minimum to participate is a dollar or a month and we're going to be kicking off at noon eastern standard time if you cannot financially participate you can always watch live and i will be uploading it as a video as part of the content here that you can watch on youtube as well so i think that wraps about everything up and i've said everything else so i guess the only thing left to say Bye!